in previous lecture we had discussed that sperm and zygote not zygote sperm and ovum they fuse to form a single cell called zygote and this zygote has the potential to form a complete organism with multi trillion cells right now the sperm and ovum they consist of how much chromosomes 23 chromosome 23 chromosome sperm and 23 chromosomes from ovum and then when they combine they form zygote that consists of 46 chromosomes and from zygote the with from zygote with cell division uh, 1 to 2 2 to 4 4 to 8 and so on many different cells formed until a complete organism is formed and each cell each cell of a human being consists of 46 chromosomes so what i mean by this is that the chromosome numbers remain same from zygote onward the chromosome number remains same that is 46 so from zygote uh, the cell division that leads to formation of same number of chromosome that is called mitosis right and the cell division that leads to formation of sperm and ovum is called meiosis and in meiosis chromosome number halves chromosome number is decreased right the cell from which these uh, gametes male and female gametes they are formed that cell consists of 46 chromosomes but these gametes consist of 23 chromosomes so half number of chromosomes right but from zygote onwards whatever the cell division that leads to formation of cells that consists of same number of chromosomes and this type of cell division is called mitosis so two types of cell division are there two types of cell divisions are there one is mitosis that occurs in somatic cell all of the bodily cells right and meiosis it occurs only in gametes the sex cells right so first we will discuss mitosis usually in embryology we go in chronological order so ideally we should have discussed meiosis first but we are first discussing mitosis because it will be very easy for us to understand meiosis and we will first understand mitosis so mitosis consists of two parts we can discuss mitosis under two levels that is division of dna or nucleus and division of cytoplasm organelles and cell membrane this this part is called cytokinesis the main part is division of nucleus and it is the toughest part relatively tough part to understand so our main focus of understanding is division of nucleus but let me tell you something about the dna you know what is the length of dna yes it's something that uh, from earth to mercury and then return back yeah the dna is so long but that is dna of all the cells of our body right the dna of single cell is about 1.8 meter long dna length of dna of a single cell is about 1.8 meter but what is the size of an average human cell that is 40 to 50 micrometer so, so much small cell and such a long DNA is packed inside not only that so much small cell but a part of that cell. It is packed inside nucleus of that very small cell. So, how it is packed inside, how DNA is packed inside the, the nucleus of a cell. Let's see how. So, here is the DNA. It consists of nucleotide bases right the code of our all the proteins of our body that is present inside the DNA right and it is in the form of nucleotide sequence so this is the nucleotide sequence and you know we have double stranded DNA this double stranded DNA 
इज क्वाइल्ड अराउंड ईच अदर टू फॉर्म अ डबल हेलिकल स्ट्रक्चर डबल हेलिकल स्ट्रक्चर इज देयर राइट then this double helical dna it interacts with histone proteins histones are positively charged protein they are positively charged because they have abundant amount of they have large amount of basic amino acids and what is the charge of dna it is positively charged or negatively charged or neutral is negative it is charged. negatively charged yes because of phosphate groups phosphate groups are present which imparts negatively negative charge to dna and this negatively charged dna it interacts with positively charged histone proteins you know we have uh, four we have four histone proteins that form an octamer and this dna it is woven around this octamer histone octamer so dna is woven around histone octamer and this structure this histone complex with dna around it it is now called nucleosome this nucleosome complex is then further coiled around each other around itself to form the structure that is called chromatin that is called chromatin right then this chromatin is further wound around each other to form a three dimensional geometry called chromatid so what is chromatid chromatid consist of chromatin that is further coiled around each other and here certain proteins that hold up into this structure these proteins are called scaffolding proteins and it forms this beautiful three dimensional structure and this three dimensional structure is called what chroma chromatid so this is a structure of whole chromatid and here this part is called centromere yes you have a question if this is chromatid then what is chromosome oh we will discuss what is chromosome later if i tell you right now you will be confused so i will discuss that later so here is a cell uh, and in the nucleus of cell dna is present in the form of chromatin it is present in the form of chromatin and that is before the division start that is before mitosis start when mitosis start it is further packed up in the form of chromatid firstly it was in the form of chromatin loosely arranged but then when cell division start it is packed up in the form of chromatids that is just like when you have to carry some baggage some luggage from one place to another you have to further pack it up you cannot take it away in in loosely arranged fashion you have to pack it up in briefcase or something right so that's why it is further packed up so that it is it becomes easier to divide it so this phase this first phase of mitosis in which dna is further condensed it, it is further packed up this is called prophase p for packed p for prophase easy similarly in this phase nuclear membrane starts to disappear you can see nuclear membrane start to disappear so that division of dna becomes much easier now here let me tell you something now you see we have actually 46 chromatids we have 46 double helical dna molecules in each cell we have 46 double helical dna molecules arranged in the form of chromatids right now but i have only shown here four and it is representing 46 chromatids no i have a question that let's suppose if we divide these chromatids that half goes to one cell and the other half goes to other cell now each cell will have half number of chromatids each cell will have half number of nuclear material each cell will have half number of dna this should not happen in mitosis right 
so that's not how mitosis should occur so how can we solve solve this problem actually before prophase start before mitosis start there is another phase in which cell prepares itself for mitosis that is called interphase and in interphase this chromatids they replicate a copy of this chromatid is formed in front of it so that it can be easily divided so now i am talking about interphase before mitosis start in the interphase this dna exact copy of this dna is formed in front of it by the process of dna replication and this dna copy is again further coiled interacts with histones and coil to form chromatin so now we have a copy of chromatin right and this copy of chromatin in prophase again it is condensed to form two sister chromatids two chromatids that are exactly same as the previous one they are exactly alike and because they are exactly alike they are exactly same we call them sister chromatids i know you don't exactly resemble your sister but for the dna for the chromatid their sister resembles each other right things are different at molecular level so two sister chromatids they are attached with each other at this part that is called centromere and this whole structure it is called chromosome so this is actually chromosome so actually in prophase we have two sister chromatids not just one and these chromat these two sister chromatids they are packed together to form a chromosome and this is prophase remember dna is not replicated in prophase dna is replicated even before prophase start in interphase specifically s phase synthesis phase of interphase we are not discussing interphase so i am not going to tell you the details of interphase but chromatin is copied dna is copied in interphase and then it is further condensed to form to form chromosome in prophase right let's move forward now in this phase chromosome chromosomes are arranged on midline they are arranged onto equator onto midline and they form a plate like structure and this this thing is called mitotic metaphase plate this is called metaphase plate right so this phase in which chromosomes are arranged on midline it is called metaphase m for midline m for metaphase easy then there are special organelles called centrosomes centrosomes and from centrosomes special fibers originate fibrous structure originate and they attach to chromosome at this part at centrosome no not centrosome at centromere they attach these spindle fibers attach at centromere and not exactly uh, at the centromere but it is a part of centromere let's suppose this is a part of this is the centromere and here these fibers are hooked to get hooked with a special protein here with this protein and this protein is called kinetochore they are hooked with kinetochore why it is called kinetochore kineto means to move and core means chromatids this kineto core it helps to move the chromatid away from each other it helps to move the chromatid away from each other so it is called kineto core and these fibers which attach to centromere at kineto core they are called kineto core fibers they are called kineto core fibers 
then there are other fibers that are not attached with kinato core and they are called non kinato core fibers or they are also called polar fibers polar fibers and both of these are spindle fibers easy now what happens these fibers these kinato core fibers they shorten in length their length decreases and when they shorten they will pull from this hook from this kinato core they will pull these chromatids away from each other from this point they will pull it away from each other here also they will pull it away from each other right and these non kinato core fibers are polar fiber their length increases they elongate they elongate they lengthen up and kinato core fiber they shorten due to lengthening of non kinato core fibers cell also elongates right let's see what happens so that's exactly what happens these fibers shorten pulling the chromatids away from each other and these non kinato core fibers they lengthen elongating the cell this phase is called anaphase and in this phase chromatids move away from each other a for away a for anaphase so this is happening in anaphase is it they are moving away from each other finally with a splendid hard work of the spindle fibers these chromatids ultimately reach their destination they reach far away from each other these sisters are now separated and this happens in telophase chromatids are now far away they can only see each other with telescopes these sisters can only see each other with telescope of course they do not have some molecular telescopes inside the cell but that is just a mnemonic so that you will remember don't tell anyone that they are carrying the telescope inside the cell the nuclear membrane also reappears and that is about the telophase the last phase of nuclear part of nuclear division of mitosis next we will discuss what cytokinesis division of cytoplasm organelles and plasma membrane so in cytokinesis there is formation of special contractile ring in the cytoplasmic side of cell there is formation of contractile ring it is it consists of actin myosin proteins i am not going to go into detail and due to this there is a cleavage furrow is formed a pit or groove is formed here right and which will ultimately lead to division of cytoplasm organelles and plasma membrane into two and we will ultimately form two daughter cells from one cell so ultimately now we have two daughter cells and each daughter cell have equal number of dna of course they have uh, chromatids but before next mitosis start in the interface they will form an other chromatid in front of it to form a complete chromosome so now you know what is the difference between chromatid and chromosome and what is the concept of sister chromatid clear up till now so now i will not speak now you will just watch the complete animation of mitosis so this was mitosis very easy let's review again in first phase prophase dna is packed into chromatids then in metaphase it is arranged on chromosomes are arranged on midline in anaphase they move 
away from each other they start to move away from each other and telophase they are now far away from each other looking at their sisters with special telescopes right and ultimately in cytokinesis they separate out yes you have a question yes uh, with each cycle of mitosis the number of organelles are also reduced to half then what happens in the subsequent division that organelles will be vanished or what will happen no, no organelles will not vanish the actually in interface not only dna is replicated but organelles are also copied they are also replicated so that we have a copy usually more than one copies of organelle each organelle so that uh, with the cell division the organelles are distributed equally to daughter cells right so it in interface many different things occur there are different phases of that we will not discuss the detail actually dna is replicated right organelles are replicated and cell prepares itself for cell division for mitosis right another question Uh, do you think spindle fiber they form in metaphase or which phase? In yes. Metaphase. No, actually, spindle fiber they start to form in prophase, but they attaches with kinetto core and they 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 complete they undergo the complete uh, synthesis in metaphase. So spindle fiber start to form in prophase. Okay. Clear. So this was about. mitosis if you like this video please give it a thumbs up please share your comments regarding this video please subscribe to my channel and please support me on patreon thank you